if you've ever used the standard air press method that the manufacturer suggests um, in the pack, um, there is one issue with it. And that is once you put your coffee in, if you start pouring the water in and your coffee is ground too coarse, the water will pass straight through. With this method, what we call the inverted method, you're going to turn the whole system upside down. And basically, we're going to put the plunger in place first with the AeroPress upside down. And now we've got this watertight chamber here that we can brew into without losing any of that water into the cup below. Now, before we get started, I'm just going to quickly whiz through some of the kit I've got on the table here that I'm going to be using today. Obviously, I've got an AeroPress. Um, I've also got a grinder. I'm using the Wilf Uniform Grinder. One thing about grinding for AeroPress, I think it really does suit hand grinding as well. If you've only got a hand grinder at your disposal, because you're using quite small amounts of coffee, it's much easier and convenient to, to quickly whiz through with a hand grinder. So whether you're lucky enough to have an electric grinder like this or a basic hand grinder, this brew method will work for you. I've got a kettle. Um, I like to use a temperature controlled kettle. The brewing temperature for today, I'm going to use a 90 degree brewing temperature here, which is a bit cooler than you'll generally find for other brewing methods. But the air pressure, you can actually drop down to an 85 degree brew temperature. So by using about 90 degrees in the kettle, I will end up with about an 85 degree brew in the air press itself. An air press allows you to either use coffee roasted for espresso or coffee roasted for, say, filter or cafetiere. It doesn't matter which style you use. And if you've ever wondered what's the difference between an espresso roast and perhaps a filter roast, it's down to, from our point of view, how far we push it in the roaster. We try to break down espresso roast a little bit further without compromising on that kind of origin character you, we want you to taste in the coffee. That's simply because espresso machines have a big ask. They've got about 25 seconds to get all that flavour out of the coffee. So we just want to break the beans down a little bit to help the espresso machine out. So let's have a look at this brewing method. We have got um, the AeroPress set up and as I said before if you're going to do this just make sure your plunge is a little bit up so it's not too wobbly at the bottom and I'm going to set that on my scales and I'm going to use the funnel to drop the coffee straight in. Now this is a kind of medium coarse ground. Because I'm not going to get any leakage of the coffee through into the cup, I've got plenty of time. Time is my friend with this brewing method. I can use a coarser grind and I can actually let it steep for a little while in the air press. So coffee's in there. My filter... I've placed into the filter holder. And I actually pre-wet this filter in here as well. So just run it under a warm tap. And basically what happens is I turn it over, it's not going to drop out. In a minute, I'm going to have to turn and place this on the AeroPress. If you try to use a dry filter paper, it's going to fall straight out. My recipe is 12 grams of coffee to 170 grams of water. Now, that recipe is kind of my own personal recipe that's evolved over time. The idea between about the 170 mils for me is it fits the kind of cups I drink from. So I'm aiming to make a full cup of coffee out of this brew. So let's get this going. I've got a timer on my scale, so I want a minute and a half brew time. So as I start to pour the water, I'm going to set the timer on the scales, and we're going to put 170 mils of water in here. Slow down, and there we go. Now it's important to stir. Um, we've got a narrow chamber of coffee and water here to, to make sure all those grounds are nicely saturated. I'm going to just stir it for about 10 seconds. And again, I tend to keep a very consistent approach to this. And there we go. Now it's time to lock the filter cap on with the damp filter in there so it won't fall out. And now we're 45 seconds in. We've got 45 seconds to wait for that brew to be ready. So while I do that, I'll get my cup ready. And I'm going to reuse this filter again. 
One thing that panics people a little bit about inverted methods is we've got to write this error press now and people panic, water's going to come out, coffee's going to come out. So I use the funnel to give me a kind of a wider place to kind of set the error press into. Just remember, and I've, it's happened to me twice, is that make sure there's a filter paper in there. Without the filtering paper there, you make a huge mess. And I've done that so many times at home. Um, last Christmas particularly, um, I had coffee and hot water all over the kitchen. So we bang on 130, and the trick is to grab the error press and turn it straight over into the cup. And now we can gently apply pressure to plunge down. And we're waiting for the hissing noise. So we want all the water to go through, but we don't want any of that air to go through. So right at the end, there's that hiss. And as soon as I hear this hiss, I stop. I don't want to force the air through. So I want to have plunged all the way down. Remove this. And with an error press, just leave it to one side. Let it dry a little bit. And when it comes to popping out into the bin, it's much better if it's slightly dry. And there we have our mug of coffee. So there we go. The inverted error press method. It's really simple. It's a quick way of making coffee. If you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below and I will get back to you. Um, in the meantime, thanks for listening and I would love it if you could like and share this video.